Welcome to Intermediate Algebra, Unit 5, Lesson 2, Adding and Subtracting Polynomials. We have two lesson objectives. After we are done with this lesson, you should be able to simplify expressions requiring the addition of polynomials and simplify expressions requiring the subtraction of polynomials. By simplifying, we mean you do the operation and group all like terms and, and give your answer that way. So what is a polynomial? It's an expression. And notice I say expression. It's not an equation because an equation would have an equal sign. We use polynomials in equations, but a polynomial itself is just an expression consisting of two or more terms. Terms are items separated by either subtraction or addition. So everything I'm circling here separates terms. There are two terms here. There are one, two, three, four terms here. There are three terms here. So a polynomial has two or more terms, and it's, the exponents are integers. We don't have um, a half as an exponent. You haven't seen much of that yet, but you will. But to be a polynomial, you have to have an integer exponent. So how, what do we mean by add and simplify? Well, if I have two polynomials, one is 5x squared minus 4, and the other is 4x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 6, and I'm asked to add them, that is, that is the, the skill we're working on right now. So by adding, it means we're going to combine like terms. So like terms have the same, same variables with the same exponent. 5x squared is the same type of term, or is a like term, with negative x squared. I have 5 of them, and I have a negative 1 of them. Negative x squared is the same as negative 1 times x squared. So you just add the coefficients together. 5 and negative 1 would give you 4x squared if you were adding those. Numbers by themselves are like terms, so anytime you have you know, just a number standing alone and another number standing alone, you can combine them. The sign in front of the number is what you're using to combine them. So if I want to combine this negative 6, this, the 6 with the 4, it's a negative 4 plus a negative 6. And in this problem, only the second polynomial has an x cubed term or an x term. So they end up not getting combined with anything else because there's no other terms that have those same variables with those same exponents in this problem. So here is how the addition can be written out. That's what you're doing. Now notice I put parentheses around each. This becomes really important when you do subtraction. But here's your first polynomial in the first set of parentheses, second polynomial there. So I look at the 5x squared and I say, are there any x squared terms there? Yeah, I have a 5x squared and a negative x squared. So I'm going to combine those. A negative 4 and a negative 6 get combined and the 4x cubed and the x stand alone because there are no terms like them in the first polynomial. And I end up getting 4x squared minus 10 plus 4x cubed plus x. In math, we tend to write these out in what we call standard form, where the highest exponent term goes first. So I just rearranged, put that term first. The x squared term will go second. And I keep the sign with the term. If there's nothing written out in front of the first term, it's a plus. Um, then the x term, it's x to the first, and then the number goes at the end. So some students find it helpful to line these up vertically, one above the other. So notice I put a 0x in there just so they would line up, or you could just leave a space, I suppose. Um, so I've lined these up, and I see I have no x cubes to add together. 5x squared minus x squared is 4x squared, 0x plus x, or if I left the space, I would recognize that as I'm not adding anything. Negative 4 minus 6 is minus 10. That might be an easier way for you to organize your work. So how is subtraction different? We have to really remember that subtraction is just adding the negative of. And in the case of a polynomial, the negative of means you change the sign on every term. You know, with numbers, we know that subtracting 2 is the same as adding a negative 2. In a polynomial, 
if I want to subtract x squared minus 5x plus 6, it's the same as adding negative x squared plus 5x minus 6. Every term changes sign. So I'm, if I'm told to subtract 5x squared minus 4 from 4x cubed, you've got to decide which goes first. Well, you start with this one. I'm taking 5x squared minus 4 away from what I started with. So that looks like that. So you have to recognize what to do with that word if your problem is presented that way. And notice I put parentheses around each of my polynomials. Because if I don't put those parentheses, I will only subtract the 5x squared. I will not subtract the negative 4. So I have to write that out carefully. Now, in algebra, we can look at the subtraction of a polynomial as distributing a negative 1. I multiplied the 5x squared by a negative 1. I got negative 5x squared. The, the negative 4 by a negative 1, I got positive 4. That's where the adding of the opposites comes. So after I do that, this becomes addition. So I have 4x cubed and no x cubes to add from it. X, negative x squared plus a negative 5x squared. Those are like terms. No x's to go with together in both sets of parentheses, just in the first set. And negative 6 plus 4. So let's take a look at this one. So the solution becomes 4x cubed minus 6x squared plus x minus 2. Often I see a minus 10 at the end because students do not subtract that second term. They add it. They leave the sign the same and add. You can't leave the same sign the same and add. You can change the change the sign in at. And if you're not certain about what I mean by like terms, there is a video posted in Blackboard that should show you a little more about how to figure out what like terms are. That's a little bit before the um, entrance requirements of this course, but certainly if you need to review it, I'm, I'm happy to help you. Or take a look at the video first and then get help. So let's do some examples. Example one. I'm going to add. Adding isn't too bad because I don't have to worry about signs as much. I do have to a little bit. So I have an x squared term. Do I have any x squared term? Okay, so I have a 3x squared plus a 1x squared. That gives me 4x squared. I've taken care of those. I tend to cross those out. 2xy. There, are, there is nothing with x times y in the second polynomial, so I have nothing to combine that with. So I just write plus 2xy. Sorry, I lost my... Uh, so I get 4x squared, that I had before, plus 2xy. Negative y squared. There's no y squared to my second polynomial, so I just write that down as it is. And now I have to see... I took care of 3x squared and the x squared. I have... And I took care of all of these... I have 4x cubed minus 5x plus 7. Now when I write that in standard form, what we call standard form, start with one of the variables, so I'll start with the x, and put its highest power term there. So I've written that down. Then move down. Is there an x squared term? Yes, there is. Is there an x term? Yes, there is. You're moving down your exponent down by 1 each time. 5x is the same as 5x to the first. Then you go to the combination of the two variables. And then you move up in exponents. There's a 2xy, that's a y to the first. There's no other combinations of exponents, so I get minus y squared. So this will be my answer to that one in the correct order. So here's example two. This one is subtraction. So you want to be particularly careful. I am going to rewrite this as an addition problem first. 3x squared plus 2xy minus y squared plus negative 4x cubed minus x squared. I've changed the sign. Changed the sign of the negative 5x to become positive 5x. Positive 7 becomes negative 7. Now I'm adding. I have an x cubed term in the second polynomial but not in the first. 
So I'll just write that down. So I'm starting with the highest power term and just adding now. Negative x squared plus 3x squared will be a plus 2x squared. 3 minus 1 is 2. Um, I have a 5x and nothing on the other side. 2xy. I'm just underlining them so I know I've taken care of them. Minus y squared minus 7. And that is the solution to that subtraction problem. So this one says subtract 4x minus 8 from 5x squared minus 2x minus 8. You're starting with this, the from one. So you do 5x squared minus 2x minus 8. And I'm going to line this up vertically and show you how you would manage that. I'm going to put the 4x there, the minus 8 there. I wrote 4 times 8. Sorry, let me erase that and rewrite it. Oh, no. I lost the whole thing. All right, so I'm going to write it as this. And I need a pen to write. That's what I meant to touch. 5x squared minus 2x minus 8 minus, and I'm going to line these up, but I have to realize this parentheses here, 4x minus 8. So I do that. Now I could do the subtraction. I'm going to tell you it's much safer to do this next, do it this way. Change that to a plus. Change the sign in this one so it's a minus, the sign in this one so it's a plus. I've changed the sign in each thing, and now I have an addition problem. And I can see negative 8 plus 8 gives me a 0. Negative 2x minus 4x is minus 6x. 5x squared plus no other x squared term gives me that. So my answer is 5x squared minus 6x. Let me move on to the next example. So you have to understand what the word from means. You have to understand which one is subtracted from the other. So the next example is actually three for you to try. There's a, an addition one and two subtraction ones, one written out in math symbols and one written out using the word from. Stop the video, try each of these, and come back and check your answers. All right, here are the answers. If you are having difficulty with these, if you did not get any of them right, you need to get help right away. But if you just missed one of them, see if you can try and find your mistake and don't make it again. Thank you for joining me in this edition of Math Teacher to Go, and I'll see you next time.